The group consisted of different ad hoc members depending upon the subject on the agenda. The basic members were Rockefeller, a representative of the Department of Defense, a representative of the Department of State, and the Director of Central Intelligence. It was soon called the 5412 Committee or the Special Group. NSC 5412-1 established the rule for the first time established the rule that covert operations were subject to approval by By secret executive memorandum, NSC 5410, Eisenhower had preceded NSC 5412-1 in 1954 to establish a permanent committee, not ad hoc, to be known as Majority 12, MJ-12, to oversee and conduct all covert activities concerned with the alien question. NSC 5412-1 was created to explain the purpose of these meetings when Congress and the press became curious as to why such important and prominent men were meeting on a regular basis. Majority 12 was made up of Nelson Rockefeller, the Director of Central Intelligence, Alan Welsh Dulles, the Secretary of State, John Foster Dulles, the Secretary of Defense, Charles E. Wilson, the Chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, Admiral Arthur W. Radford, and that's why the Navy got everything because the first joint chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff who served on MJ-12 was Navy. If it had been an Army general, the Army would have had it. The director of the Federal Bureau of Investigation, J. Edgar Hoover, and that should answer a lot of questions for you, and six men from the Executive Committee of the Council on Foreign Relations known as the Wise Men. These men were all members of a secret society of scholars that called themselves the Jason Society. I see you smiling, Bill. Thought I didn't know it, didn't I? <coughs> Fooled you. Are the Jason scholars who recruited their members from the Skull and Bones and the Scroll and Key societies of Harvard and Yale? And that was stated verbatim in Operation Majority. The wise men were key members of the Council on Foreign Relations. There were 12 members, including the first six from government positions, thus majority 12. This group was made up over the years of the top officers and directors of the Council on Foreign Relations and later the Trilateral Commission. Gordon Dean, George Bush, and Zbigniew Brzezinski were among them. The most important, however, and influential of the wise men who served on MJ-12 were John McCloy, Robert Lovett, Averill Harriman, Charles Bolin, George Kennan, and Dean Acheson. Their policies were to last well into the decade of the 70s, and it is significant that President Eisenhower, as well as the first six MJ-12 members from the government, were also members of the Council on Foreign Relations. Thorough researchers will soon discover that not all of the wise men attended Harvard or Yale and not all of them were chosen for Skull and Bones or Scroll and Key membership during their college years. You will be able to quickly clear up this mystery by obtaining the book The Wise Men by Walter Isaacson and Evan Thomas, Simon & Schuster, New York. And under illustration number nine in the center of the book, you will find the caption, Love It with the Yale Unit, above, far right, and on the beach. His initiation into Skull and Bones came at an airbase near Dunkirk. I have found that members were chosen on an ongoing basis by invitation based upon merit post-college and was not confined to over only Harvard or Yale attendees. It also had something to do with how much money your family had, unless you were a military officer. A chosen few were later initiated into the Jason Society. They are all members of the Council on Foreign Relations and at that time were known as the Eastern Establishment. This should give you a clue to the far-reaching and serious nature of these most secret college societies. The Jason Society is alive and well today, but now includes members of the Trilateral Commission as well. The Trilateralists existed secretly several years before 1973 because I saw the name of the Trilateral Commission in the documents in 1971. 
The name of the Trilateral Commission was taken from the alien flag known as the Trilateral Insignia. And that should give you some clue as to how much trouble you're in. Majority 12 was to survive right up to the present day. Under Eisenhower and Kennedy, it was erroneously called the 5412 Committee, or more correctly, the Special Group. In the Johnson administration, it became the 303 Committee, named after the room that they met in at the White House when they met at the White House. Because the name 5412 had been compromised in the book The Secret Government, Actually, it was not compromised. It was intentionally leaked to explain the purpose of the meeting of these men so that no one would go looking for NSC 5410 and NSC 5411. And I wish you all luck. I hope that you're able to dig it out. Actually, NSC 5412-1 was leaked to the author to hide the existence of NSC 5410. Under Nixon, Ford, and Carter, it was called the 40 Committee, and under Reagan, it became the PI 40 Committee. But over all those years, only the name changed. The positions remain the same. By 1955, it became obvious that the aliens had deceived Eisenhower and had broken the treaty. Mutilated humans, yes, mutilated humans, were being found along with mutilated animals, and yes, mutilated animals, and those of you who doubt that this is taking place, should leave your job, should leave your home, should do whatever you have to do, and go look for yourself. Because it's important that you know it and that you believe it. These things were being found all across the United States. It was suspected that the aliens were not submitting a complete list of human contacts and abductees to MJ-12, and it was suspected that not all abductees had been returned and this has been verified. The Soviet Union was suspected of interacting with them, and this proved also to be true. It was learned that the aliens had been and were then manipulating masses of people through secret societies, witchcraft, magic, the occult, and religion. After several Air Force combat air engagements with alien craft, it also became apparent that our weapons were no match against theirs. In November of 1955, NSC 5412-2 was issued, establishing a study committee to explore all factors which are involved in the making and implementing of foreign policy in the nuclear age. This, again, was only a blanket of snow that covered the real subject of study, which was the alien question. For, in fact, 5412-2 had, as I told you earlier, been written in 1954, when NSC 5410 and 5411 was written, and 5411, by secret executive memorandum, in 1954, the study group was commissioned to examine all the facts, evidence, lies, and deception and discover the truth of the alien question. NSC 54-2 was only a cover that had become necessary when the press began inquiring as to the purpose of regular meetings of such important men when the press asked Gordon Dean somewhere near the end of 1954 why they were meeting and what they were studying, Gordon Dean says, as of yet, we have no direction, but we're working on it. It then became necessary to find a direction and find a reason for these meetings, and that's exactly what they did. The first meetings began in 1954 and were called the Quantico meetings because they met at the Quantico Marine Base. See, one thing I knew, ladies and gentlemen, I know who they are. I know what they were called. All I had to do was find out who belonged to those names. And it's impossible to hold meetings of 36 prominent men secret over such a long period of time. The study actually lasted three years, not forever. It was a three-year study, period. Period. 